Hello, Bunk Club and beyond. Are you guys out there? Anybody out there? It's cookie. It's time for cooking with Adita. You guys are so fortunate to be a part of this wonderful group who has completely connected everybody with every resource they imaginable. So that is very, very fortunate. Please make sure you always look through your Bump Club feed because there's always new events and meetings and great conversations. So be sure to keep looking through that. And also like Bump Club and Beyond on Instagram and of course Facebook and at Adita Lang, which is me, because I have all sorts of recipes and stuff that I'm sharing for you guys. So please be sure to do that. I have listed this time the recipe in the description. You know, it only took me, I don't know, five or six times to learn my lesson, but the recipe is in there. We are gonna make an av on, I was gonna say avocado salad, but avocado and mango salad today, okay? And so I'm pretty excited, and I'm here with my wonderful cohort, Mila. And the book is inside the bottom. And the, oh, the book is inside the bottom, yes. And so I do, so she's trying to remind me that in the description, um, I'm giving you guys 50% off my digital book that also includes video recipes. So um, please use that coupon in there and make it happen, okay? So anyways, um, a couple of things before we get started, okay? We're gonna talk about the ingredients. So the ingredients today, I've had to tweak it slightly because I couldn't get certain ingredients, but of course, mango, nice medium-sized mango. When you get a mango, you have to feel it. And if it feels smushy, then it's perfect. If it feels too hard, don't cut it. Do not stick a hard, these are, these are life lessons, guys, okay? Do not stick a hard mango in the refrigerator because it'll never get soft. Leave the mango on the counter. When it gets soft, then stick it in the fridge. The exact same thing goes for a Haas avocado. These little avocados, when they're hard, please don't stick them in the refrigerator. Leave them on the counter. Then when they get soft, like this, you can put your thumbs into, then you stick them in the fridge and then they're ready to go, okay? So we've got avocado and we've got, hello, hello. Please tell me where you're from. I love finding out where people are from when you put on here, so put on there, okay? Hi. So we are so glad everybody's here. Okay, we got mango, we've got avocado. Now, we've got cucumber, a medium-sized cucumber. We've already kind of chopped the ends off because my daughter and I love cucumber with just a little bit of salt. There's a little snack, so we had a little nosh before we started. But, um, oh, Minnesota, cool, okay. Keep telling, I wanna know where people are from. Put that in there. And you guys, questions, N nutrition questions, question about feeding your kids, put those in there too. Southern California, Michigan, love it, okay. So now, what else is gonna go into this? Now, usually I would put mint in here, but I couldn't get mint. So we're gonna use cilantro because I love cilantro. Now it's a completely different flavoring, just, get, just so that you guys know. But I am gonna share a couple of things with you today. So let's say, first thing, I wanna show you this ugly thing. You see this here? This is how you are to save your greens, okay? So when you come back from the grocery store, and you buy cilantro, right, like this, you buy cilantro, you are going to stick it in a glass of water and you're gonna use that same bag from the grocery store and put it on top and you're gonna leave it standing in your refrigerator. So I, I move the shelves of my doors so these things stay standing. I do the exact same thing with kale, collard greens, mint if I would have finally gotten mint, okay? <laughs> Um, basil, anything. I do exactly the same thing. So in my refrigerator, I've got all these things stacked up with everything in there, okay? So that is the best way to save your greens because if you take your kale, for example, and just throw it in the drawer, it's only gonna last you a few days. But let me tell you what, if you put it in a jar with the plastic on top of it, this is gonna last you a good week or more. So take that as a good hint. Oh, New York City. Oh, New York, not the city. Okay, hive to New York. I'm so glad everybody is here, cool. Okay, so I have replaced the mint with this, with cilantro because I just wanted something green in there. And then we can also put in green beans. I didn't get green beans either. So we're gonna mix, skip that part. But the recipe, use the recipe. The recipe is awesome when you put it all together, okay? And um, we are going to start to slice everything up. So now I wanna teach you guys, I did a cooking thing back when I could go out and was footloose and fancy free and not stuck in the house. Um, I did a cooking thing and I was amazed at the people who did not know how to cut a mango or an avocado. So my friends, I'm going to teach you, okay? So let's start with the mango. The mango, look at the mango this way, okay? See it this way? That means the pit is going like this. Alexandria, Virginia, hello. Okay, so what I want you to do is take the mango this way. See, up and down? Because that means the pit is in the center and you're not gonna hit the pit. So what you're gonna end up doing is cutting it on either side of the little nub. And then you get a piece of mango there. So we have one piece of mango here. We're gonna cut on the other side of the nub. 
which is going right around the pit, okay? Then I'm gonna cut two edges off here because we have that there. And then there you have it. So this is going to be what? You're gonna cut it all? Yeah. Okay. So she's in charge of cutting. But I just wanted to kind of show you guys how to cut a mango because I was appalled. It was very frustrating. I saw this woman, she was trying to peel it first and then she didn't know how to cut it and then she kept cutting into the pit, you know? Peel it first because then it's like in squares first. However you'd like to do yeah, it first. Huh? Well, it's. I think it's easier if you just take the skin, you take your knife inside the skin. You gotta be very careful though we don't cut any fingers. I don't want missing fingers from this event. Okay, there you go. And then you put the skins to the side. There we go, cool. Great having a sous chef, what can I say? Okay, me uh, avocado, next one. So avocado, you're just gonna cut it in half. Okay, so here we go, we're gonna cut it in half. Now, let's say I was only gonna use half the avocado. Don't use the half with the pit, use the half without the pit. If this is all I was gonna use right now, use this one, because it'll stay fresher. Hi, Miami, yes, Carolyn's online, woohoo. Okay, so it stays fresher in the fridge if it keeps the pit. Okay, so if you put this in the pit, it's not gonna stay fresh at all, but this would. So think of that. Now, the other thing is now, now I have these two parts. Now what do I do with them, right? So you're gonna take your knife and you're gonna carefully kind of bang into the middle and just turn and then look, ooh, <laughs> that came right out. Awesome, okay? So that is my mango and avocado cutting 101 for all of you guys out there. Now, if you have nutrition questions, please be sure to put them in the feed because I'm gonna keep looking as we're making our salad here, okay? So we are gonna basically cube everything and we're gonna to try to do it as cute and sweet as possible because this is my dinner, or at least part of my dinner. Um, and there we go, right? Okay, so we're gonna cut everything. A lot of times with the avocado, I like to just kind of like scrape it, I guess, against the, the um, skin. And if the skin's loose enough, then you get everything to just fall right off, right? Of course, everybody wash their hands before they're doing this, correct? I would hope so, right? So we've got this going on here. And then what we're gonna do is, we're gonna put it all together. Now, in the description there, hello from Alabama. Ooh, we got, we got more New York here. More New York, Georgia, New Jersey, um, Minnesota. How much fun. Okay, cool. Anyways, so here we are, we're cutting our avocado. Now, here's something that I want you to think about, especially for those of you who have babies. Avocado is one of the best things you can give a baby. And my kids, both of them, even though now they'll probably put their noses up in the air, I used to smush up avocado with banana. Really, really yummy. And I literally would have taken my, my avocado, I wouldn't have even cut it, I would have done this to it. This is how I would have done it. The avocado would have been in there and I would have taken a fork and just smushed it inside the shell of the avocado and taken a piece of banana and smushed it in there and then fed it to them that way. That's how crunchy granola I can be every once in a while. But okay, so that's one way of doing it. Now, next thing I'm gonna add in here is gonna be my cilantro. So, you know, here's the thing about cilantro. It's really hard to cut, right? But you can smush it all up and then cut it. And then that way you can cut it really small. It's not gonna hurt it, right? But then I turn it around, I cut it the other way and I can get it as small as I want it that way. All smooshed up ah, and ready to go, okay? So cilantro has a lot of good vitamins and minerals. It's really actually very, very high in vitamin C, which is phenomenal, right? So we got a lot of stuff going on here. Oh, I have to rinse off my hands though. We can't do sticky hands. Mila, how are you doing? She's, she's on avocado, she's on um, mango duty. Yeah, it does, it's, all of it's gonna look really, really good. Okay, we're also gonna add in tomatoes. I got a little tomatoes right here, okay. I like cutting them. These are those little tiny baby cherry <laughs> tomatoes and I like cutting them in little tiny pieces. Um, so we can do that in any direction that we want to. You know, the beauty of cooking is that, you know, you can be as creative as you want to or you can just, you know, do it any way you want to. There's no real right or wrong answer as long as it tastes good. I think that's really the only thing, right? It's gotta taste good. And then so when we get our kids involved in the kitchen, like we're doing right now, it actually enables them to try more things, guys. So the more you can get your kids involved in the kitchen, the better life will be. Now, granted, depending on the age, the mess involved is enormous. I get it, I totally, totally get it. And you're talking to like a type A 
personality who really likes things very clean and I start to freak out when things aren't clean. But I'm learning to like, you know, live with it because it is just so much better to have them try new things and taste new things and want to cook and want to be in the kitchen because it's actually a gift that I'm giving them. I want you to think about this. The ability to cook when they're older is a gift. Have you ever been to somebody's house? I, I mean, I do it a lot. I go to people's houses that they don't know how to cook. I've been to people's houses that don't know how to cook quinoa. How can you screw up quinoa? But anyways, it doesn't matter. But the fact is that when you do know how to cook, it's a gift, right? So when we can teach our kids how to cook and enjoy different flavors and know that they can actually manipulate flavors, that to me is the most important part. So the fact of teaching a child how you can manipulate a flavor. So what do I mean by that? I mean that if you taste something and it doesn't taste right, well, what's it missing? Does it need to be saltier? Does it need to be sweeter? What's it need, right? And we play around with those things until we get a flavor that we like. And we can do that with just about any kind of food, really, okay? So we want to keep that in mind. What's your favorite thing to cook, Missy? Um, I don't know. What do you mean you don't know? We've been cooking a lot during this little quarantine-y thing that we're doing here. You don't have a favorite yet? No? Okay. No favorite yet. That's all right. All right, guys, any nutrition questions coming up through here, people? Come on, feel free to shoot them out at me. We, we got time for this, okay? Now, this recipe is not in any of my books. Um, it is on my website, so hopefully you got the, the website, but it's also there in the description. I put it in there this time so I wouldn't forget. Um, but be sure to check out my other recipes because my goal is recipes that I make are A, easy, and be really nutritious. So, you know, we want to do that. And for the most part, I think most of them are all pretty family friendly and approved. Seal of approval by Mila Lang. Okay, seal of approval. Big time, big deal. Big deal, okay? Ooh, well done. Okay. So what are you guys cooking for dinner tonight? Hmm? Come on. Shoot me a little message in here. I want to hear about it. I want to know. What are you guys cooking tonight? Or are you making this with me? If you're making this with me, I want to know that too. Shoot me a little note right now telling me or a thumbs up or something so that I know that you guys are making this at the same time as I am. And if not, I want to know what you're making for dinner because inquiring minds want to know, okay? How are we doing there? Hey, careful with that knife, Missy. Okay. There we go. I'm going to help you with the cucumber. Which one do you want me to help you with? Cucumber or the mango? Mango. mango? Okay, fine. Okay. We got some mango Amazing. issues going on. Huh? The rest? Mm. No, let's do like half of that. Okay. There we go. What else is happening here, guys? Hey, come on, you're fading on me. You guys were really good. The other day we had some great questions that came through. I'm trying to think of what something had asked me the other day. Um, let's see here. So when I teach about health, I teach about a combination of what I call the four pillars. And the four pillars is food and nutrition, sleep and relaxation, exercise and movement, and happiness. And so the key is, is that you want to balance those and include those all in your day to day every day throughout your, your life, right? Because those are what makes us happy and healthy. Baby on board. He loves avocado and mango, mango so looking forward to the recipe. Yay! How much fun. Good. Okay, so we want to make sure that we keep, especially during this time, we keep everybody moving. We keep everybody eating really, really good foods. This is such a, an amazing time to kind of restructure your day. I find it fascinating. Oh, we're having crab quesadillas. Good. Yummy. My daughter is sleeping while nursing right now, but I would love to be cooking. It looks so yummy. Mango season is upon us. Yes, it is. So see, I'm in South Florida, and so mangoes like literally fall off the trees. Like you can go to somebody's house and like 12 mangoes will be on the ground. It's an amazing, amazing feat. Avocados actually do the same thing, but our avocados in Florida are these big ginormous avocados. They're more water-based. And this Haas avocado is more oil-based, which is actually better for us too. But they're both still actually very, very good for us. Oh, look at you, I think you're done. Okay. Now, in the recipe, let me rinse my hands off here. Okay, in the recipe, which I have over here on my phone so that I wouldn't forget to tell you guys anything, the dressing is going to be a third cup rice vinegar, some lime juice, some minced up chilies, and some honey. I didn't make the I didn't make the dressing this time because um, see that 
person that she won't eat it. So we decided we'd skip that part. We're just gonna drizzle olive oil all over it and Can I do it that hands? way. Yes, you may wash your hands. So we're just gonna use olive oil, but I highly recommend you putting together the dressing because it makes a big difference and it's gonna make the flavors go in. And then really adding in the mint, we'll do that too, but the cilantro is gonna be quite yummy today. Let me see if we can mix these up here. So. That's it? Huh? That's it? Yeah. Okay. Hold on. Yes. Oops, everything's about to fall. Here we go. Okay. Crack is a delicious. Yum. Okay, so I'm going to also put a little bit of salt in here. Can I have some salt? Yeah. Okay. And so, now, if you guys heard me on my other little cooking talks, I always talk about how you want to have a balanced combination. You want to have a balanced combination of carbs from fruits, vegetables, and unrefined grains. You want a good quality protein and you want good quality fat, and that makes a meal, okay? And that's also going to stabilize your blood sugar and the blood sugar of these people too, right? Mm -hmm. So in theory, if I decided, look how pretty this looks. If I decided that I wanted this as a meal, what's it missing? Mm, it's missing protein. So we got to decide how we're going to do that. Now, hemp seeds, phenomenal. They're essential fatty acid, they feed the brain, so they're really, really good for you. They're great for your kids. They don't really have a flavor, so you can add that into just about anything and no one's going to complain for the most part. <laughs> you know, sometimes they do, what can I say? Anyways, um, so that's a good one. This salad goes great with garbanzos. So you could add in garbanzos, you could add in hemp seeds, and all of a sudden that turns into a really good full meal. So think about that. You always wanna make sure you have that in there. Now the reason being, is because carbohydrates from fruits, vegetables, and unrefined grains, they digest really fast. So that means all of a sudden, you're either really, really hungry, or you just kind of need more calories, or you, or you lost your energy. Because also carbohydrates are for immediate energy. So the thing that keeps that energy in our body for a longer period of time is protein and fat. Protein and fat take longer to digest. So when you mix them up, with that energy from the carbs, then you have longer energy for a longer period of time, right? Mm -hmm. And with our little ones, so here's something to keep in mind. So if you send a little one to school with a bowl of cereal and milk, <laughs> that's gonna digest fast, okay? Milk is not a protein, guys. I hate to break it to you. I know people think it is, it's not. It breaks down and digests just like a sugar. So it digests really quickly. So now all of a sudden they get to school and they're hungry, but with their, when they're really little, they actually don't recognize that they're hungry. And so what they do is they lose interest or they lose attention. So if we wanna maintain their attention before they go to school, you're better off sending a kid to school with a high protein breakfast, high protein, high fat, than you are with a cereal breakfast. And I, I realize that, listen, cereal's easy. That's the easiest thing you can do, right? I totally get that. But you know, if you can really just get yourself in the kitchen on the groove, then making eggs is not that difficult. You can do oatmeal, and you don't have to cook the oatmeal. You do oatmeal with just some hot water just to kind of cover it, and you walk away, and within seconds, it's just ready. You don't have to cook it. And you mix in there some nuts. I like to do, I call it a nut mix. It's basically pulverized almonds and cashews. They're all raw. Hemp seeds, chia seeds, I pulverize it all, and I use that mix to put in things. I could actually use that same mix inside this amazing salad too, okay? So adding those kind of things into our day-to-day -day makes a huge difference because here's the thing, especially when they're school-aged, we want to grow this brain and we gotta feed it just the right foods, okay? And so if we're not feeding it the right foods, well then they're gonna get distracted and they're not gonna pay attention and they're gonna be bouncing off the walls. True story. So I love going to, I go to schools and I do these, these speeches basically on food and nutrition and everything for parents. And I had gone, there was one school I had gone to repetitively. The principal and I were pretty good friends and I would go there a couple of times a year. And one day she comes up to me, she goes, I've got to confess. And I said, what do you mean confess? Like, what are you talking about? And she says, well, she goes, you know, for years, my son's teachers kept telling me that I should go get him tested and that maybe he needed to be on medication. He was a little bit, he was a little hyper. And she goes, and I've been going through this for years. And so after I kept listening, she goes, granted it took me the second or the third time you gave the lecture for it to sink in, but I realized that what I'd chosen for breakfast wasn't really the smartest thing, and so I changed his breakfast. And she goes, she says, I've been, he's for a year, he's been on this new breakfast. And I said, that's wonderful, fabulous. And she goes, yeah, she goes, amazingly though, the teachers reached out to me and said, hey, did you put him on meds? Because he's like a whole different kid. 
And I was like, whoa, like, what were you giving him before? And she says, well, I was making him fresh cinnamon rolls every morning for breakfast. And that's what he was eating. So he would eat cinnamon rolls, which is flour, sugar, right? Flour, sugar. And he'd get to school and he'd be wired. And then, of course, at some point, he'd probably fall. And when he fell, he wouldn't have a really good attitude. And then he'd eat lunch and move on from there. So just kind of think about that, guys, because I do know, listen, being a parent is tough. I have two kids. My other one's hiding because he decided this was not his gig, which is okay. But it's really tough. I get it. But we need to feed them the right foods because we are creating their health foundation for when they're older. So my health is attributed to the way my parents fed me when I was little. And I want you to remember that super important. So we, we can't just like, you know, say, oh, just eat this because I just need to feed you. We need to start really working on how we can really grow their palate and make sure that they eat the right things. I would love for you to teach nutrition at my son's school. Do you offer virtual right now in these times? Yes, I do. I offer tons of virtual stuff. So I do virtual coaching in the kitchen, guys. So please feel free. I do virtual coaching in the kitchen and I do a lot of virtual talks for schools especially now because the schools are doing like the virtual school for the kids so they're doing some virtual talks and educational programs for the parents as well so yes please reach out to me at adita lang i am available for all that and i also do even in this virtual world i'm still doing kitchen cleanouts i'm still doing meal prepping and teaching different things to do in the kitchen so all of that is available to you guys okay any health questions out there please let me know shoot them down here and if not, we will be finishing up here pretty soon. Hopefully you guys will get a chance to make the salad at home and enjoy it with your little ones. You wanna take a bite? It's just mango and olive oil. Eat the tomato. Well, you don't have to eat the tomato here. Eat a piece of mango. Have it. What do you think? You didn't have tomato. There was no tomato on there. There was tomato? Oh, she got a piece of tomato. Oops. Anyways, guys, listen, it was great seeing you today. Feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. Oh, look, she got the tomato. Oh, oh well. I thought I was just going to pour the tomatoes to the side and you'd just be fine. Anyways, have a great night. Peace out, guys. Bye.